Hello all, welcome to another session on interfaces and conversion. In this session, we'll discuss about AR invoice creation using a public API approach. Let's get into outline. So we'll try to understand about what are the components involved for AR invoice import, what are guidelines you have to follow, and what are the approach I'm following, and the information about migration. So I'm not covering up the migration, but I'll try to provide a source code, and this time you have to understand how do you migrate. So in the AR inter invoice interface, so generally whenever you work with any kind of interface, always you have to understand what are the seeded components which Oracle provides. So it all depends upon which module you want to work, which functionality you want to work. So based on that, you have to decide the approach. In this particular scenario, for AR invoice, my requirement is to create AR invoice. So I'm following an approach called a public API approach. Why I'm calling it as public API approach? Because Oracle provides a PL SQL API to create the data in the base table. And there is no interface in interface table involved. And when the data gets loaded, it will get loaded into the base tables. I just provided only few information. It's not the holistic total information, just a base level of creating an invoice as well as the lines. And this is a table and there is no import job as such. You just need to pump the data into the public API in a record fashion. Okay, let's get to the next slide. So as usual, please follow the guidelines whenever you design with any of the interface or conversion, data file format, periodicity, what is the reprocessing mechanism, what do you want, how do you want to purge it, how do you want to validate the data, as well as the reconciliation reports, as well as performance also, if you have very huge data. And the implementation process, how I'm following in this particular example is for AR invoices. For AR invoice, we have multi-level data. I'm going to say you will have header, line, and distribution. But in this particular example, I'm just covering only two levels. One is header as well as lines. What I've done is I've designed a separate control file for loading header data into staging table, design another control file to load the lines data into line staging table, and I have designed a Unix shell script to invoke these two control programs and register this particular Unix shell script as a concurrent program. So that is the first concurrent program. In the second concurrent program, what I've done is, second con concurrent program validates the data which is available in the staging table and then calls the public API. So there are total two concurrent programs involved. So this is the implementation approach I'm following. So there, there are multiple approaches and it all depends upon your understanding, your requirement, you can follow a different approach. So earlier we have designed using a PL SQL API and using just directly registered a SQL order control file as a concurrent program. But in this sample, I wantedly registered a Unix shell script. From that, I called this particular two SQL order files. I'll show you the source code. You'll get an idea if you never worked on the Unix shell script to invoke a SQL order file. And here, here this is the slide which represents how to be registered a Unix shell script as a concurrent program, okay? It's very simple. What you have to do is you just create your Unix shell script file and then register it, register it with the execution method as host. The file extension of the Unix shell script should be .proj and the remaining information is as it is. Like a, the only difference is execution file and execution method is should be host. And make sure that you copy your proj file into the bin folder of a respective top based on your registration of your concurrent program okay so let's get into the list of components what are we have here so here the data file sorry this is this is the ar invoice header and lines data and the first two are staging tables and the second section is about data files and we have two control files one pl sql api and there are two concurrent programs one is for loading the data into staging table and another one is loading the data into the base table by invoking a PL SQL API. If you observe, if you observe, you know, totally, totally, if you, I mean, I mean to say like, if you try to understand the information, what I have been telling, see for this gen, for working on a simple interface program, we require these number of things. So the only drawback in my sample is I'm not considering the validation as well as error mechanism, but remaining, this is the real time implementation approach, what we generally follow in any kind of project. The process may be different, but you may have more validations or maybe you have a you have very strict coding, but generally these are the minimal set of components you require to design AR interface program. Of course, you may have the effective way, but this is what I uh, would like to provide in a very simple manner. The first thing I would like to discuss is understand about creation of the 
AI invoice data from, from the front end. So whenever you work with any kind of invoice, please understand which navigation, which are the base table and how do you create a sample data? Because generally in most of the projects, getting the sample data always takes much time. So best thing is first of all, understand navigation and how do you create a sample data? So I'm in the receivables responsibility, click on transaction, click on transactions again. Now it will open a transaction window where you can mention the information. So I just mentioned the source as manual and I'll just mention the bill to customer number. Anything which is available, we'll just mention that just a sample data. So most of the times in most of the projects, functional consultants provides the sample data. But if you learn it, it's well and good because it doesn't need to depend upon those guys always because this expectation from the technical folks also, they have to know the creation of sample data, right? Lines. I'll just mention test quantity one price one that's it say so this is a very simple way of creating a sample data for receivables the data will get stored in RA customer transactions all RA customer transaction lines all those are these are the only two tables involved I mentioned in the query script which is will be provided with this particular uh, particular session content RA customer transaction all is the base table for header data RA customer transactions lines all is the base table for the lines data okay so now this is my invoice number so now we just understand how do we create a sample data. Even I'm not discussing about all the remaining fields, but only thing is just try to see which are the major required fields, enter them, create it, that's it. Okay, so now the next thing is, let, let us get into our custom sample, what all we have created, what are the custom components. The first set of components are the staging tables, right? So in the staging tables, if you're here, if you observe, I have invoice header staging table, invoice line staging table, so let me show you the DDL script of both of them. I just created the sample with a minimal set of components because I don't want to include all the necessary columns. I just included only the mandatory columns. In your real time requirement, you may even need to have an additional columns also, but this is just a very simple sample. I don't want to make it complicated. So this is my header level data. And this is my line level table, line level staging table. This is my line staging table, X6 ABC AR invoice lines, and the other one is X6 ABC AR invoice header staging DDL. So these two things have the information about the table script. And the next component is control file, right? So let's see the invoice header control file as well as line control file also. So let's see them. They're very simple, just uploading the data into the invoice lines table, and the other one is uploading the data into the invoice header table. That's it. So I mentioned the transaction data, sys date, sequence as maximum one. So very simple logic. And the next thing is considering the package, right? So package here, if you observe, what I'm trying to do is I'm just, I just have two methods. One is validate data, other one is import data. So whenever you design any import program, always have, make sure that divide your logic into multiple processes or a function, because don't try to write your total complex logic in a single process. It becomes very difficult for you to understand as well as modify if any issue comes across. Have a different logic for each particular purpose, for validation, different one, for reconciliation, different processor, for importing different processor, for error logging, different processor. So have a separate set of, met separate set of methods for each particular functionality. There is no harm in having the number of processors more or functions more. As long as you maintain the readability, as long as you maintain your coding properly, there is no harm in having multiple blocks. So in this validation, I have not written any validation wantedly. I just want, I don't want to make this particular sample complex. Very simple program, right? This is a validation logic. So in the import logic is a major logic where you have the information about what I was trying to do is read the data from the staging table. So here, if you observe for record in invoice header staging table, I'm pumping that I'm reading the data from the invoice header staging and then setting the values for the table type record. Why I'm setting the value here? Because this public API requires the data in the table record format. So whenever you work with any kind of API, first of all, you have to understand what are the parameters and what, is the, what are their data types and what is the fashion we have to follow. So that's the reason here, if you observe, I just have the header table, header table record for the header data, line table record for the line data, and then I'm setting the values and calling the invoice. So here the logic is for each particular header line, you have to call the API. You can't just 
down the n number of header lines that that way it will not work header table should have only one header line and lines can have multiple lines once you finish your line data then simply call the api after that again call for the call the api for the another header record okay for each header record you have to call the api that's how the logic is once your api is called read the error logs perform a commit and generate the information in the output if at all if you have any other, other reconciliation tables or any other uh, if you want to if you know if you want to find out like how many created for a given particular stage in table data or your uh, what you say source data then update the tables accordingly so in this one i just want to demonstrate how do you validate as well as how do you call the simple public api so i just have a for loop inside another for loop first read the header table data then read the line table data once that is done simply call the public api so here let me show you yes line number 124 is a very important step right so here i'm passing my header table record line table record distribution and the remaining values i'm not passing there are a few set of things which are set as null in this particular sample okay and also generally like you know when you get a requirement you cannot design this particular programs at a stage right the first thing is try to create the data using manual step and the next thing is create your simple anonymous program here if you observe i just i included one more sample one more data file here let me show you that yes not this one one minute yes this is one of my very simple sample so which have the anonymous block with the hard coded data so i just designed a sample with the hard coded values that's it and call the api so what is the use of this one this is not the real use i mean to say like this will not help you this is this will not help you in the real time but this will help you to create your pl sql api in a appropriate manner now initially without without having without having this particular baseline of coding it is very difficult for you to write your pl sql api that's the reason what you do is first of all just simply write your logic in an anonymous block make a note of what are the mandatory columns what are the data types involved if this works simply copy paste this logic into your custom api and the remaining overhead what you have to do is call the appropriate programs for the validation error log mechanism that's it okay so this is the simple information about ar invoice okay thank you